We're gonna remove the hair piece. Okay, so this is where we are now. We'll trim up my natural hair that's left on the sides and go ahead and give everything a nice shave. I'm, I'm ready to do it, but I don't really know what I'm gonna look like. But now that it's here, it's certainly a moment of hesitation. It's time to make it change. Okay, so this is where we are now. Overall, definitely need to take the next step at this point. I probably noticed it when I was a medical student, lots of stress all the time, uh, waking up very early to go around on patients, often staying quite late in the hospital um, under times of stress and call and trauma and all these different things that you're getting pulled into. When you have poor sleep and you have lots of stress, you know, especially if you have an underlying genetic predisposition to hair loss, it's just going to accelerate things. And that's probably when I first noticed it. I was probably 28 or so. My younger brother had actually started thinning before I did. And I know he had tried over-the-counter minoxidil, started trying it. But yeah, I know I was seeing more like as I would shower and style my hair. And then, you know, I could just kind of look down in the mirror and see more of it, um, you know, more of my scalp than I could previously. And I got a sunburn on the top of my head. And that's when I really realized, like, I don't have nearly as much coverage up there yeah. as I thought I did. So I think I've got most of it with the trimmers. Pretty happy with that so far. It feels weird to run your fingers up over there. Just with having the hairpiece, I've avoided like touching my head more than anything necessary, but it feels really good. For the next part, I'm gonna start by trying to use an electric trimmer. This one here, it's a five head. I don't know if it's gonna be any good or not, but uh, we're gonna try that out. If not, I've got my shaving cream and a razor here as a backup. I don't think I had the illusion that I was going to prevent this completely. I mean, I've seen my dad, I've seen both of my grandfathers, and I knew what was eventually in store for me. Um, I just felt like it was happening maybe a little earlier than I would like. And I think there was that, you know, subconscious knowledge that like, I, I'm just not going to keep this up every day for the rest of my life. That's not going to fit into my routine. It's not... Uh, part of my priority. But I don't think that mentally, psychologically, it really impacted me very much until I got really active on social media. It wasn't until I was producing videos every single day that I started to recognize that I, something needed to happen, some type of change. I got on TikTok, it was a lot newer then, and uh, had some early success, was able to start growing a following, and, and then started noticing, you know, when I'm doing videos about skincare, you know, I'm showing like washing your face and applying different products and things to try to educate people to take care of their skin. And a lot of times you got to tip your head down, you know, when you're washing your face. And I was seeing that in the camera and I started to get pretty self-conscious about it because I don't, I don't feel old. And I felt like it was making me look older than I was. So a few initial observations. The razor takes a lot of passes, that electric razor. I'm not sure it's the most efficient way to go. Also, I've noticed that with wearing the hairpiece, of course, I wasn't shampooing my hair at the frequency that I was before. So my hair care practices and the skin health of my scalp was definitely impacted by that. Um, my scalp is very dry. So as I shave, I'm getting a lot of flakes. And so I'm gonna have to do you know, moisturizing and of course, lots of sunscreen now, but I didn't realize how dry my scalp was underneath everything. You know, you had the adhesive on, but then even stuff around the sides that was my own natural hair. I would rinse, but I wasn't shampooing, you know, but once a week or so. And uh, that definitely made my scalp more dry. So I'm gonna rinse all this off in probably shaving cream and a handheld razor, and then we'll be pretty much done. And I remember that there was there was a time, you know, standing in front of the mirror with the trimmers, and I was I was ready to do it a couple of years ago to, to just shave everything off and own it. So I held off, um, you know, I tried, um, a different compound medication at that time that had minoxidil and finasteride in it in a topical formulation. Um, and I, I really felt good about that for a couple of months. I felt like I was getting some improved growth. And then I started to get an allergic reaction to it where every time I'd use it, my, my forehead and, and scalp would just break out in intense itching. I took oral finasteride for a few weeks and I, I have lots of patients that take it and do quite well with it, but um, just didn't again, feel like it was for me. And so it was actually on TikTok that I saw an account that did hair system. That's when I got started on the hair system. The hair system, getting that done for the first time, was that quite an easy kind of process? They obviously would have had to shave the the middle part right and you 
would have got a look kind of yeah a brief look into the future right yeah i've got that selfie and i did not like it i've never shared it with anybody <laughs> yeah you know love the results early on of the hair system and, and, and of course it was a dramatic change part of what led me here to this point is mm -hmm. recognizing that um, it didn't give me the confidence that i thought that i was going to have you know there were times when it did especially early on but, you know, they would look great for a month and then they'd really start falling apart, get pretty thin. And, you know, I routinely asked my coworkers if they could tell and, and they're like, no, nope, still looks good. But I really felt like I could notice. And when I realized again that I was fixating every day on my hair, I was like, this isn't the reason that I got into this. And when you feel more anxiety with losing fake hair than you did your real hair, <laughs> it's not sustainable. Style the hair every day, you know three hour appointment to get a new one cut in. Um, there's a lot of other things I wanna do with my time. You know, I, I enjoy swimming, sitting in the sauna, rough housing with my kids and, and different things. And I just decided, you know, I just want the freedom to wake up and just go and just do whatever I want. Okay, so here we are now. I'm not at my usual recording location. I'm out attending a conference at Hawaii. And this was kind of the first public appearance that I had where I was meeting people that knew me before. And I definitely caught a few people off guard, but I'm so happy that I went ahead and made the decision to get rid of the hairpiece and to shave my hair. It's freeing, it's comfortable, and it just gives me more flexibility in you know day-to-day -day life and activities where I don't have to worry about anything else. Um, shaving my head now i've done it a couple times you know i hadn't shaved my head since i was a kid and so i you know wanted to make sure that i had a good head shape for it and everything but i'm really happy with that decision so far when we look at ourselves when we judge ourselves we're always our own worst critic and as i was starting to lose my hair i definitely became more self-conscious than i needed to be and i went to great lengths to try to preserve my hair and we talked about that at the beginning of the video um, this is a decision that I was thinking about making a couple of years ago, and I'm glad that I didn't at that time. I think if I had at that time, I probably would be wondering, you know, should I have done this? Should I have done that? Should I have tried all these different things? Um, I went ahead and did all those different things and, and just didn't get the results or the maintenance and upkeep wasn't necessarily worth it for my active lifestyle. And so now that I got through all of that, I am really comfortable moving forward in this direction. It's a big change and it's going to take some getting used to for myself. Every time I look in the mirror, it catches me off guard like, oh yeah, you don't have hair anymore. And every time I meet somebody that doesn't know about it yet and that has seen me before, uh, it catches them off guard too. And sometimes people don't know, should I say something? Should I not say something? Um, and it's probably different from person to person. But for me, I'm totally comfortable if somebody wanted to ask like, hey, <laughs> where's all your hair? Um, I work with many patients on cosmetic concerns and there's just as many patients that I talk out of doing something as I talk into doing something. So sometimes a patient may come to me and they want filler and I don't think filler is a good option for them or uh, they want to do, you know, cosmetic mole removal, but it's a very, you know, small, very normal looking mole. And we tend to judge ourselves harshly and be very critical of our own appearance. And that's what I was going through with my hair. And it took time before I just got comfortable with the fact that it's okay to not have hair, it's okay to have hair. I don't wanna judge anybody that wants to do everything humanly possible to keep their hair, to have hair transplants or to wear a hair piece. Um, you know, I could go back to wearing the hair piece if I want yeah, that appearance. And I don't think that I'd have any qualms about that. But right now with my you know, lifestyle, with the things that I want to pursue, um, activity levels, just playing with my kids. It's the right decision for me not to do it. And I may get, you know, maybe some mean comments or something online because that's just sometimes the way social media works. But I'm grateful for a group of really supportive followers and subscribers who I want to give back to you as much as you give me in positive support and encouragement. So this is where I'm at with my hair journey. I'm ready to just be done with it and just live a more free, relaxed, active lifestyle. I hope that um, everybody likes it. And if you don't, that's okay too, because I didn't do it for anybody else. I did it for me. And that's what I've done every step of the way is I really did it for me. Um, and there were definitely times where I was listening to voices that were critical, but it was still coming from within. 
because uh, I really didn't get a lot of comments from other people about thinning hair or anything like that. I'm really happy with this. What do you guys think? Have a great day.